Hello and welcome back to your 3ds Max tutorials. So we're going to continue on a little bit more with editable polys as it really is a very important feature of 3ds Max and you will find yourself using it um, a lot as you as you create your own models and your own objects um, and it really is a very very useful tool. So let's continue on. We're going to, we're going to use this tutorial to create a, a very elaborative um, sculptural, organic sculptural object which would pretty much be very difficult to draw using using most softwares. So we're going to use it. We're going to use the torus knot, that is uh, one of the parametric objects within the extended primitives command. So we go torus knot. So we have P and Q. That's pretty much just the, the twists and turns that this knot is 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 going is governed by. So if I just start off, I just draw the knot, something like so. And you can see if I go three, then it's pretty much it's just a circle. Um, but we're going to just go with five and six, and that gives gives us a nice, a nice uh, geometric pattern. And um, already this this shape already would be pretty tricky to draw uh, using using most applications. So let's continue on. We're going to convert this guy to an editable poly. Like so, and now we're gonna we've 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 created uh, we've created the knot. We're gonna draw in a hexagon, and um, that will uh, match the number of uh, the number of twists around around this uh, around this torus knot. So we're gonna go into create. We're gonna go into our shapes and into ngon, and we're gonna by default it's on six sides, so we'll we'll roll with that. So I'm just gonna draw it over here a little bit to the side because I want to show you another useful tool. It's this align tool within our toolbar. So the end gun is already highlighted. We're at the clicking align. So it wants, it's asking us what do we want to align this to. We're going to select our, um, our torus knot. And we're going to go in the X position and the Y position. And we don't need to go in, in the Z position. That's true. That's our height. But we're going to leave it on the ground plane. And make sure the centers are checked. So now both shapes are aligned and by their centers. Okay, so I'm going to take the torus knot and I'm going to move it up away from the hexagon. And I'm actually going to convert this guy to an editable poly. That actually could be the second time I've done that, but however. And so we've, we've, we've worked with creating or converting objects to editable polys and this time we're going to convert and uh, this shape, this geometric shape to an editable poly. So right click on the shape, convert to editable poly. And this is a very useful tool. I'm going to turn off the grid system. So I'm going to select the edge selection. I'm going to highlight all of the edges. And then you can see in our edit edges um, command, we have a connect. So if you click the little little square, square icon beside connect, well then that we can determine the number of segments, the amount of pinch and the slide. So that's pretty much like the distance between between the lines. But we're just going to go with one for now. And that just gives us this extra little polygon. Uh, if I select polygons, it gives us these extra shapes that we can now use. So, another thing that I'm going to do is, I'm going to unselect that. I'm going to... Back, go back to the polygon selection. I oh, know I'm just going to actually first of all I'm going to attach this torus knot to the hexagon shape below. So now they're all considered as the same object. And then I'm going to highlight my polygon selection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bridging some of these segments together. So if I just hone in on one of these, say this middle guy. Um, don't actually need to select them. If I just uh, if I just bridge from here to we'll say something like so, something like that, and then I'll catch the underneath of that segment here, and we'll pull that over this direction like so. No, we won't. That's not too good. I just go from this bridge from this selection here 
to here and that seems to be cutting cutting through so that's not great I'll tell you what I'll do I'll undo that and I will detach this I will detach this uh, object again so we had attached now we're going to detach we we'll leave it as object one just for now because we're going to attach it back again so I'm going to highlight object one and I'm just going to scale him up uniformly something like so he's still centered but now he's a little bit bigger so that's going to give us a little bit more room to work with so I'm going to go back in here I'm going to find our, my attach button and attach it back to this again and now we're in business so now we're all it's, it's all considered as the same sorry about that now we're all, it's all considered as the same object once more so back to where we were originally highlight polygon selection and bridge and this time I'm going to start on the bottom to make sure that I'm not going to hit that's better now that's what I wanted and then we can go to the top of this one like so and we would put that up along there like that okay so I'm going to continue on around uh, the perimeter of this it's only six times but to save you I am this the boredom I'm just going to pause the video and I will uh, I will return in just a moment okay welcome back so as you can see I have bridged all of these uh, segments together and there's one of them that is a uh, or yeah one of them that is going up in to, to the wrong segment so it starts at the right one and it goes up to this segment and it should be coming over to here and I've purposely left it here because I want to show you another tool and um, that is very useful so I'm going to go back in here to the um, polygon selection and I'm going to delete those polygons select these guys make sure they're all gone and you'll notice that there is a hole left from from those uh, from this from this the space that, I, that they have left behind okay so now I'm going to go back to my edge selection I'm going to select each of the edges by holding down control I'm selecting each of the edges around the perimeter of that hole I'm going to go to my modifier list and cap holes and when I click away you can see that it is a different shade so if I go back into the cap holes and you can see this smooth with old faces once we do that then it becomes part of the original okay I just thought it was a, it was a pretty useful useful tool and I'm just going to also do the same with this with this guy back into editable poly my edge selection and very quickly I'm just going to run around like so and another modifier cap holes and smooth it all faces okay back to editable poly and we can uncheck that okay so because these were done beforehand that's okay what we can do is now if we go back up here to our command our cap holes and if we right click on the entire project convert to editable poly and now those uh, changes have been embedded into the into the piece so they can't it can't be changed uh, anymore those those uh, cap hole instances are now buried within the geometry of the of the object so once more I'm going to select the, the faces and I'm going to bridge um, this last this last segment so I'm going to zoom in here and bridge him to here okay that looks better I'm going to unselect the polygon selection and we'll leave, we'll leave it at that for now so what I will do is first of all I'm just going to show you how it looks with a turbo smooth and we'll put it up to maybe three iterations so here we have this nice organic uh, free-flowing kind of a form um, already already in front of us so let's just give it a little bit more and um, more life more depth we're going to turn off this turbo smooth 
In fact, yeah, we'll turn off the turbo smooth and I'm gonna go down, press T again, and I'm gonna go down to a twist. I'm gonna twist the entire object, like so. Something to that effect. And I'm gonna actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the twist from this stack and I'm gonna drag it to below the turbo smooth. So it's as if the twist happened beforehand. And now when we put back on our turbo smooth, and we can see we have this beautiful, uh, beautiful organic shape that would be really very, very tricky to even comprehend in, uh, in any other uh, or most other three-dimensional drawing packages. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and we will move on away from editable polys in the next tutorial and I look forward to seeing you then.